First off, I'd like to say good, good evening to everybody. I'm kind of confused about this study. Can, can you state your name and My name is Jeff Jones. Jeff Jones. I'm confused about the study. More so how it was handled. I know it was thrown into you all's lap the day of. I've done some research, so a lot of you all did not get a chance to look at it, properly go over it. So I'm not blaming you all, but the problem that I have is with waste management. You all don't consider us essential until we are needed. And because during COVID, you all said we had to come to work. But now that we've got this study, we're not essential again. And if we was essential, you would pay us if we are. I don't have a problem with no other division. I don't have a problem with police and fire getting their money. I don't care about nobody else getting theirs. All I'm saying is consider the rest of your employees. Watch this. Watch this. Fleet service, can you please stand? And they have somebody speaking for them. But because you all have left them out also, we all feel the same way. I have went to five different divisions, accounting. Come on, don't overlook us. You get $40 million and you give $25 million of that to three different people, three different divisions. It's in the news. And do you know what the news has to say about y'all? Y'all did it again to your employees. You take any division that work up under you all out of its rightful position, that part suffers. You take streets and roads away, we suffer. You take waste management away, everybody suffers. If we leave that garbage for three weeks, this city will shut down. You will have so many diseases. Oh, by the way, the commissioner's here, and she says she support what I'm going to say, so I won't be in trouble. This city needs every part of us. So once again, we asking you all, as our bosses, quit slapping us. You slapping us as if we don't matter. You pass stuff as if we're not going to say nothing but yet let us not come to work. Every other month or so, someone in private is adding on to, someone in private is adding on to us. We gotta go pick up their garbage. Every other month. But we don't get compensated. You all probably don't even want to take your own garbage out. But we gotta come and get it. I heard the statement, some of you all say it. Somebody said we get paid too much as it is, but let that garbage sit. I promise you, you will call us back. And I promise you one more thing, and I'm gonna sit down. Private can't do what fleet service do. Private can't do what solid waste does. Private can't do what streets and roads does. Cause if private could, you all would already privatize us. But because they can't, you can't keep overlooking us. Thank you for your time. I have 12 minutes, which includes your three minutes. Nick Klaus was giving his to uh, Matt Woodson. Oh, Matt Woodson, I yes. apologize. No problem. Um, okay, so you'll have nine minutes. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. If you don't, yes, if you don't mind to say your name and your council district, please, for the record. My name is Rob Wilson and I work for Fleet Services. Good evening, Mayor Gorton and council members. At the last city council meeting, I spoke about the pay study and some concerns we employees have about it. There are a few things that this pay study did not take into account. I'm sure as you all are aware, the cost of living has absolutely skyrocketed and continues to climb while our salaries are unable to keep up. As a technician, 
we have to supply our own tools and it requires a sizable investment just to walk through the door of the government. Every year, the city purchases new trucks, cars, and equipment, and our tools have to keep up with the changing technology. Yes, we do receive an annual tool check, and we are grateful to have that as a benefit, but it doesn't necessarily cover all the tool changes year to year. With an ever-changing fleet, we have to constantly learn new systems and skills. We do our best to stay on top of our game to ensure high quality service to other divisions and in turn to the citizens of Lexington. But without some form of compensation structure, we don't receive comparative wages for our skills. There is no ladder to climb to bring us anywhere close to maximum pay. I am not conv convinced the comparison between our shops and other municipalities is truly accurate. Both shops come with a large variety of systems that require adoptive skills to keep our fleet in operation. We service diesel, gas, and CNG engines, trucks with more than one chassis, and vehicles built specifically for our use. When comparing our job titles to the municipalities in the study, was the workload the same? Do they require the same type of skills and the same type of certifications? These are all factors that should have come into play. If you were to implement some form of a step program, you're ensuring that you're keeping the dedicated and well-trained employees Lexington needs. I would say most people that come to work here do not have prior experiences with the municipal equipment needs. Therefore, every employee, regardless of the exact profession, has a lot of tax dollars invested in them to help them fulfill their role. Without retention, that money is wasted. To help with retention, I would ask you to consider increasing the salary of the employees whose jobs were upgraded in the study as provided in the code of ordinances. While the compensation, while the compensation study might attract more employees, it does nothing for the retention of loyal employees currently working for you. Every time an employee leaves, the cycle starts all over, and so does the cost to the government. With stagnant pay, people use the city as a resume filler and move on quickly. If I was going to pick what to do on a, what to do on a study, it would be to find out what we are spending to replace an employee who left for more money and how that would affect us each year if we had continually increased salaries to keep up. Also, I would ask, what is the cost in lost time and the possible injury to employees who are now having to pull double duty? Our shop is a great example. The techs that work at Fleet Services all mesh extremely well. If we start losing people and having to rehire, we have to rebuild that team all over again, causing downtime of our vehicles and the added expense of training new employees. Thank you for your time and thank you for your service and feel free to visit us at Fleet Services. Thank you very much, and your council district, please. Good evening, my name is Matthew Woodson. I'm a resident of the second district here in Lexington. Uh, I'm also the fleet operations supervisor for the, the division of fleet services. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for giving me the time, the opportunity to come up here and speak. Uh, I'd also like to thank my, my colleagues and my fellow LFUCG employees for coming out and support. Uh, earlier in the week, I emailed each of you all, uh, sent each of you all an email along with a copy of the ordinance, chapter 21, section 30, that refers to the uh, reclassification of pay grades. I'd like to thank council member Maloney. He's the only one I heard back from. Um, but I, I've, I've reached out to HR. I, I've tried to inquire for some clarification as to how that, how this compensation study can supersede that ordinance um, in regards to employees who were reclassified without a compensation increase. Um, I've still not received any explanation that seems to make any sense to me. Um, in my opinion, this compensation, compensation study was flawed and incomplete. Uh, it only accounts for the days that in your current position, it doesn't at all factor in experience or other qualifications for the job. The other thing that I, and, and as a supervisor, I'm directly involved with the hiring process. One thing I can tell you, I have not lost a single applicant to the city of Columbus, the city of Cincinnati, city of Chattanooga, 
that's not who we're competing with for our employees. We're competing with the, the local businesses in our, in our situation, Paul Miller Ford, Green's Toyota, other independent automotive shops. Um, so I, I don't know that that's a relevant, a relevant comparison. The other problem, as I, as I think many people have pointed out, Rob just mentioned, there's no way to progress through the pay scale. So you get hired in, you're stuck there. You get a pay, of, you get a cost of living increase periodically from year to year. That pay scale moves. You're stuck in the same spot on the scale. You never move up the scale. Um, there's very little opportunity for promotion, at least at our division. I was fortunate enough myself to move from a vehicle and equipment technician up to my supervisor role that I'm in now. Many people aren't that fortunate. I've got 10 technicians that work below me, and until I go somewhere, they're, they're stuck where they're at. They've got nowhere else to go. Um, working for the city government should be a desirable job. It should be a career. It's hard to make it a career if there's no room for growth. If we don't have any way to move up, if we don't have any way to progress through that pay scale, it's, it's like Rob said, it's stagnant. It's, it's a dead end job. You're stuck. You get hired in and that's where you're at. Um, if we wanna provide the best services to our community, we need to be competing for the best employees, the best people in our community that we can put in these positions. We don't have a compensation structure that allows for that. We can't compete. We're losing out to private industry. We can't do the best that we can do with the, with the, the situation we've got now. You know, once upon a time, the benefits package here was great. I think statewide, government-wide was great. It's not quite there anymore. Uh, tier three employees like myself, we don't quite have the, the benefits package to compensate for the lower wages that, that you know some of the people who have been here longer do. We don't get a pension. We have a cash retirement plan. To say that our compensation is competitive, it, it's not. And even the benefits are not. I mean, we have our clinic. We have quite a bit at our disposal. But it's not enough to offset that lower compensation that we could get in the private sector. And I think a lot of us, you know, we enjoy working for the government. We enjoy working for our communities. Um, I think lastly, I just want to point out one thing from Tuesday, and that's, that's the public safety money that was allotted. They deserve every penny, but we got to quit neglecting everybody else. Police, fire, and corrections, they need that money. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to, that should be the most paramount thing we have, but we've got to quit pushing everybody else aside in favor of public safety. Year after year after year, we do the same thing. Um, they can't succeed alone. You know, police aren't going to respond to calls without their cars. They're not going to show up if they're not getting paid. If accounting's not there, they're not going to show up week after week. Um, you know, we, we're the people on the ground doing the work that the constituents elect you all to get done. And I think it's due time to take care of everybody else. So thank you. Thank you very much. District, please, you'll have three minutes. My name's Doug Holloway. I live in the 10th district. This study was severely flawed. I'm gonna use myself as an example, but there's a whole city full of people that's been wronged. I was jumped three pay grades in this study. Did not get the step percentages to go with it. I'm now in a dead-end job. There's two places left in the Division of Water Quality for me to move up to. I've been here nine years. I worked hard, earned a promotion. And now because I got that promotion two years ago, I'm being penalized with the way the whole study was configured. I talked to Human Resources about it today. I asked, just as others here have stated, how are we violating our own ordinance? And I was told, well, it's a third-party study, so our ordinance don't apply. But if we're not going to apply our ordinances the way that they're passed, that's going to apply to everything else we do in this city. My job is a sump pump inspector. I'm not going to be able to surcharge people because a third party don't like the ordinance. I'm asking y'all not to pass this, to relook at it. You're going to have to take care of everybody. We have, you have crippled longevity for most people. And the people that are coming in are hearing the negative talk. They're not going to come in here. It's like the gentleman just said. The benefits aren't that great. You got to tier three retirement. It's not that great. It's something, but it's not that great. The pay is not keeping up with the private sector in other cities. You want to compare Lexus and Betty, compare them to Louisville, compare them to Jessamine County, who is paying almost more than we are. 
Trust me, I know they've called me three times to come to work for them. Thank you all for your time. Thank you very much. I apologize. You say okay. it for us. Uh, James Confitus, I'm in uh, District 9. Thank you. Um, I just want to reiterate what everyone else is saying and be another voice and or conceding my minutes. Um, the one thing that affects me, and I know at least 100 other people, was that uh, you get an upgrade without the um, advance in the payment. And so I went from being in the middle grade to being in the lower end because my grade went up. Um, I had actually went from one job to another job in the city during this study. So it went from having several days, you know, several hundred days, a thousand days in one job, but then it shows me as 140 days in the new job. So I don't know if that's even considering, you know, how long I've been with the city. And it's just an example of um, people that have got the increase in grade and not payment. Thank you. Thank you very much. Certainly. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening. My name is Danny Wood, and I am a happy resident of Council District 4. I am a current and beloved employee of Traffic Engineering. And I am here again this evening to bring light to the discussion pertaining to the compensation study and the future of those affected by it. I've heard it said in these very chamber that we value our professionals and that retention is a goal. These market ranges established by this study help identify the disparity in the pay here in LFUCG. We have the opportunity to correct this. It identifies people who went above and beyond their responsibilities and duties to fill in for vacancies or just for governmental needs. These people represent some of the glue that keeps our government going and functioning as well as it does. Yet it does not provide a pay increase for some of them. If we value our professionals, if we value our employees, this study nominates for promotion, then we should reward them. I have provided Council with a simple fact sheet for your use and a discussion builder for your movement that sent this into a committee. Please do not let these words die in committee and let the facts be heard for change, for good, for the better of the people who deserve a future in our government. Show these professionals that they deserve a pay increase with this further discussion that's been motioned today. I thank you very much for your time tonight and to those of you who have reached out to me individually as, or as a group. I appreciate you and I'm glad that I'm being heard in some way, shape or form. I hope to keep the channels open for a brighter future for myself and the affected professionals that are in this room and elsewhere here in Fayette County. I thank you for your time. Take care. Thank you very much. <clears throat> if you'll state your name and council yes, district. Uh, my name is Rick Day. I live in the third district and I have worked for the urban county government for over 22 years. I also am here to speak about the compensation study and to say that, uh, and actually to speak against it. We were told, and I'm sure that you were told, that the, compens the need for the compensation, compensation study was driven by the need to retain and recruit qualified uh, employees. We were, we were losing employees and, and not able to fill their positions. So again, we were, this was done to recruit, recruit and retain. We heard that many times. I can tell you, we have no problems retaining upper level employees. I'll say maybe 530 and above, 529 and above. Commissioners, directors, CAOs, Deputy directors, we don't have a problem. Those people aren't going anywhere, and if they do, they're not going because of money. We have pro and, and if they go, we have no fill problems filling their position. We have problems with what I would call lower paid employees. I, I don't know, 518 and below, 516 and below. We're talking about people who 
uh, that, that you don't probably don't know their names. Now, the, these are people who aren't wandering the halls out here every day, and they're not sitting down here at work sessions every week. These are the people that are out driving on 12-hour shifts to remove snow in the wintertime. These are people who are standing out in the middle of traffic patching potholes. These are the people who are climbing down in sanitary sewer manholes to clean out crap. And these are the people who are flushing out tanks at the sewage treatment plants. They're there, you see, you don't know their names, but they're there and they're doing very important work. If you look at some of the numbers that are spread out through this compensation study, I think you'll notice that there's what I would consider a disproportionate amount of money going, going to the upper level positions. I, I had, I, I, I won't look at those positions, I had to go quickly glance through some of these lower level positions. I thought it was kind of interesting. Uh, and this, this was in the Division of Water Quality. I think these were public service worker seniors. Average $35,000 a year. Some of these people were getting $75 annual pay increase, $120 annual pay increase. That, that's 10 cents, on the do, uh, 10 cents uh, an hour. That's less than 1%. I thought it was interesting when I started going through it, just as I was getting ready to come down here tonight, I saw one, one person I think he, he, again, was getting less than 10 cents an hour pay increase, less than 1%. Guess what? Since this study's come out, he's resigned. He's already left. And his position will be hard to fill. The mistakes we're making here are the same mistakes we made in the past. And that's why we're doing this. We made them in the past. We need to get it right this time and I don't think this study is going to do it. Thank you. Thank you. Now, 